Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Catholic Truth Podcast, where we teach and preach the Catholic faith that's come down to us from Jesus and the apostles over 2,000 years. We want to help you to know, love, and live your faith and to be inspired by it. And today we have a wonderful guest, and his name is Father Greg Zanetti. And he is a former uh, nationally ranked wrestler, very professional wrestler who is pretty well known. And he ended up becoming a Catholic priest, even though he had it all, he became a Catholic priest. Why would he do that? Well, we're going to be uh, picking his brain today and kind of, he's going to be sharing his story, his testimony of, you know, just how he came to become a priest, how it God changed his life and made it better a hundredfold. So Father Gregory, welcome to the show. I appreciate you joining us today. All right. Thank you for having me, Brian. Yeah, so maybe just start out and talk about your you're one of three brothers and you guys were all wrestlers, but the other brothers say that you were the best of the family, yeah. you know, you're the best wrestler. So maybe you could start out by talking about uh your early days first. Well, I, I got beat up most of the time, so most of my life. So <laughs> eventually paid off in college. But um yeah, growing up, so I'm I'm the youngest of three brothers. Um we, we grew up uh, wrestling. Pretty much whatever my brothers did, I did. So, um, you know, they played baseball, they played football, they wrestled. I did all that. Um, one of the big things, one of the big part of my vocation, uh, we were all altar boys growing up. Uh, and thanks be to God, having uh, two two good older brothers, um, you know, that was one of the ways I followed them, you know, being an altar boy. Uh, and I loved it. I loved being close to the altar. And I think they did, both of them, both my brother Gene and Jeff, uh, did a pretty good job of explaining uh, of what was happening. Uh, and probably hit me later in life, but um, there was two things, actually, I remember, I don't even know if they know this, um, two things I remember them saying when I was younger. One, my oldest brother Gene, he, who was on the show, he, I remember him quoting um, Jeremiah, uh, the, the quote, um, you know, if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. I remember saying, like, if I seek God with all my heart, I'll, I'll find him. So it's like, there's hope right there. Um, so I remember that quote from, from Gene. And I remember Jeff one time telling me, this is, again, when we were young, he said, um, you know, a miracle is going to happen today at Mass. I just, that's, that's all he said. And, and I guess, you know, telling me about the Eucharist. Uh, and I just remember that. I was like, right, there's a miracle happening. Um, and so I did, you know, I, I served Mass. And one of the things, big part of my vocation, I was the parish priest there. Uh, his name was Father Rossetti. He lived to be 100 years old. So by the time I was serving for him and, and my brothers, I mean, he had to be at least in his 90s. Um, and I remember him, I remember serving. So we, we, all, we all went to public school. And so the public school kids would serve the, the early mass at seven o'clock. Uh, you know, we didn't get to get out of school. <laughs> but uh, so we'd serve the seven o'clock mass. And I remember Father Rossetti holding up the host. I remember him. You know, he's, you know, done this thousands of times. It's early in the morning. He's tired, I'm sure. I'm tired. Everyone, everyone there is tired. But I remember him holding up, uh, you know, Jesus in the Eucharist. And I remember it looked like tears coming down from his eyes. I could just see it, his, the look in his eyes. He knew who he was holding. He knew that was God. Uh, and that actually hit me years later. I actually remember that probably, I don't know, like 20 years later. But wow. I just remember that look in his eyes that, that he knew that was God. You know, and, and I got to be so close to that. Um, it was just very, very profound from, from a young age. Um, that doesn't mean I lived like a stellar life after that, uh, as, as I guess, you know, I'll explain. Um, but I just remember that, that being a big part of my vocation. And for some reason, just I remember walking home from like um, middle school um, and, and seeing him outside. And we were walking home with my friends. And I remember like, I was like, we have to go talk to Father Rossetti. Now, I don't, I don't know about you, but like growing up, I even still, you know, I'm, I'm more of a shy, you know, more to myself. And um, I think a lot of kids, right, with adults, you kind of have that like, you know, they're adults and, you know, we're, we're young. You, you, I don't know. There's, there's less of, I don't know. Yeah, I wasn't as comfortable, but for, for, for some reason I saw him. I was like, we got to go talk to him. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it was. I was like, we have to go say hi to Father Rosetti. And he would talk to us, you know, he would tell us about life. Um but I just remember there was like kind of like this draw uh, to be close to him. And I think, again, that part of that was how he said mass. And he'd always think, and I always remember he after he gave the homily or he was walking over, he would always go over to the altar boys and say, thank you for serving. Uh, and I just remember like, 
wow, you know, he's like actually thankful for, you know, my service at the altar. And he'd always say to all the little kids, all the little boys, take my job. So I finally took him up on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was kind of, um, that's when I was younger and a big part of our faith. So like my brothers, uh, probably from Gene, seeing my brother, um, see my grandpa's example. So he went to mass every day. He was very active in his church. Um, and I think my, I think he brought out the whole library uh, of um, St. Cecilia's is the parish very close to here. I think he bought that whole library. It's all, re all religious books at his house, uh, which he still have. My grandma still has them all. So we, we occasionally I'll go for, take take from his library, you know, his, um, all those religious books, but um, just seeing his example that, um, Another thing that, that hit me again years later, I remember going to my grandparents' house when I was younger and um, my grandpa was just me and my grandma and my grandpa. And he just kind of cut away uh, and he didn't say anything. And I remember it was like, where's grandpa? And I, I opened his door. He was knelt down. He was praying the rosary. You know, he didn't say, I'm going to pray the rosary, everyone. I'm leaving now. He didn't make a big scene. He just he cut away and he prayed his rosary. And that just hit me. It was like he, he always he, he was a man. Um, you know, man of faith, you know, he lived that, you know, and seeing that example, I think he was the most probably solid um, example that I saw, you know, living it like, again, I knew every day he went to mass, like that hit me. It's like, he knows what's most important in life, you know, and, and he always, you know, he would talk to us about it, he didn't like force it upon us. Uh, but, you know, he would say like, you know, God is the most important thing in life, you know, and that's something I always knew growing up. I think I got that from my brothers. My parents as well, um, but then what happened? Kind of like wrestling, you know. As you as you grow in any sport, you know, um, or I guess any hobby, you know, you you know to be successful, you have to spend a lot of time, you know. And that's something we did. As my brothers got success, you know, gained success in wrestling, uh, you know, I wanted to be like that, and that just kind of, you know, kind of took over. And then mass on Sundays became kind of optional. So like, oh, when we can make it, you know, we'll go, you know. When we can't, you know, we what age were you when you started wrestling um, and you got really involved in it? So I started in second grade. Oh, wow. Um, but probably I probably started taking it like real serious when I was in like seventh grade. That's when I. Yeah, I played other sports, football. I didn't really I played baseball for a little bit, but mainly just wrestling and football. And did you. um did your family kind of, when did you stop kind of saying, I don't really want to go to mass. It's kind of optional around what age was that? I know, let's say I could say like maybe middle school was like, you know. And did your parents make you go anyways, or did you kind of fall away a little bit? We just kind of fell away. It was kind of like when, you know, we'll go in, you know, cause then my brother, so Gene is six years older, Jeff's four years older. So, I mean, they were already in the thick of it with wrestling and, and, you know, between between three kids, there's plenty of, you know, tournaments, matches, practices, you know. So, I don't know, somewhere in between there. And it just kind of became like, oh, we'll go when, when we can. But it hit me and it started to hit me in high school. Some Somewhere, let's say sophomore, junior year, I was like, something's not right. I was like, you can't just not go to mass, you know. And so I had one of my, my friends and my, my, my best friend. I was like, we got to go to mass. I was like, we, you know, I just didn't want to go alone for some reason. I was like, that would be like the worst thing if I was there alone. <laughs> you know, you have Jesus, you know, you have everything you need. But I don't know. I was just like afraid to go alone. So I, I told my friend, I was like, let's go. Let's start going to mass. So like our parents would take us. I, I don't even know if they stayed. I don't think they did. It was like, it would just be me and him. And then we started going to confession more. Um and then it just kind of it kept kind of kept growing, and then and then in college, nobody does um, that, by the way. You know, no high school kid right. says, "Oh, mass is missing in my life. I need to start going to mass again." Right, uh, like, right. So that's like yeah, that's God a grace working. that God gave you in your life. You know, He was like calling you. It seems like from an early age. And I and I always loved to learn about the faith. That was another thing. So like whatever usually came from Gene and then Jeff, you know, kind of then trickled down to me, but um whatever like gene learned as i hear you know let's about this saint or so the first big saint my grandpa had a big devotion to padre pio so that like he had you know videos we would watch on vhs going way back uh uh on padre pio and like different just you know hearing about his life the different miracles that happened you know and hearing confession for hours his life of prayer um 
I do. I just love the mystics growing up. My grandpa also too. Like that's what he would say. I'm reading this book and it's talking about like the end of the world. He would always like he'd always had, he was always reading like a book and he's like it's shaking me up. You know, like we gotta. So his name was Lewis. He would say like you know sometimes where I, I feel like I don't want to pray this rosary. He's like you better shape up, Lou. You know, <laughs> like he, I remember him him telling us that and it's like all right, you know um. Again, that is the most important thing. I, I would say that my whole life I did know God was most important. But then what happened, you know, wrestling just kind of kind of pulled us away. And it didn't have to. That's the thing. You know, just because you play a sport and you want to be successful, it doesn't have to pull you away. You know? Um, yeah, maybe it can be started... toward the end on like how to do both. But, you know, I would say it's even more miraculous considering you were treating wrestling as a god. I would imagine you guys practiced for hours. You probably did camps. You probably did tournaments. Oh, yeah. You probably were traveling a lot. And it was like pretty much your life. And somehow God squeaked in through all that and was still calling you. But, you know, like right. when you guys were wrestling, um, like you got pretty deep into it, right? You were doing it all the time. Oh, yeah. Every day. And like you said, like hours, it's, you know, you finish sometimes it's like you finish a, a practice and then you're going to another one, you know, and you know what kind of hit me? I don't know, maybe later sometime in college. But it's like when I die, it's like when we look at a, you know, I always think of like a pie chart of your life. It's like, how much time have you given to wrestling and how much time have you given to God? It's like those are you know, it's like and I know God is most important. It's like so I know that I'm, I'm accountable for that. And it's like, right. Well. You say I'm, you know, God's saying, it's like, you, you know, I'm most important. Let's, let's take a look at the chart. And it's like, that's a scary, you know, you start to examine that. It's like, that's nowhere near where it needs to be. And that's not, you know, unfortunately, that's a lot of us, you know. I would even add to that, you know, it doesn't even have to be wrestling. It could be, you know, TV. Or, or whatever. Yeah. So, or, yeah. That's another thing. Mom. Exactly. The gym. And it's, it's tough. Exactly. Oh, that's, that's another one after, you know. It's a wrestling and, and like the gym that kind of gets all tied in, you know, and, and not, yeah, not making that the God. You know, it's tough for, for example, parents, like you have to work. You are going to spend a lot of your life working, but it's like you could give that all to God. That's the other thing. It's it's also refocusing that time. It's like when I wrestle, is this dedicated to God? Am I offering this up or is it for me? And that's why I think I wasted a lot of my time wrestling you know in wrestling you have to you know have to cut weight but a lot of guys you know you lose some weight and it's like there's like a, a built-in fast almost and it's like talk about time i just wasted i didn't give that to god that could have been offered up for souls you know it's like what a what a waste <laughs> you know in, in many ways in some you know, ways that, really in other ways it seems like it was training for you you know it disciplined you it helped you yeah. to become you know super you know, dedicated, super focused, and you knew what you wanted. And now you're applying that to the godly spiritual life, which is what we all should do this. Like you, I like what you said earlier, that the sports aren't bad. We can do both, but everything needs to be dedicated to God. Exactly. Exactly. Whatever we do. And that, that's where St. Paul's, you know, you know, he says they do it to win an, a perishable crown and we an imperishable crown, but it, it's, you know, how much of it, you know, just how much of the world doesn't even think of that imperishable crown. All they can think about is that crown that perishes. And it's like, that's what's frightening. You know, yeah. It's like, you know, it's like, where are you headed if that's all you care about? And that's so many of us. It's so easy to get pulled away. I just want the it, latest TV. I just want more money. I just want to be able to support my family. But what that really means is I need a bigger house, a new car, even though I just bought one two years ago. I need a, you know another TV for the bedroom because that one's old. You know, like you know, we, we yeah. invest all this stuff, time, energy, everything for stuff that's totally and completely useless and doesn't mean anything exactly. and doesn't get us to heaven. Exactly. And that's that's one of the things I think lately I've been thinking of even more. It's like People just don't have the concept of eternity. It's like we're talking like it's not happiness for a hundred years. We're talking forever and ever. We're, we're focused on this little sliver of the pie. And yet, you know, we're not considering eternity. It's like that's frightening, <laughs> you know. Now, did you get into living a sinful lifestyle, so to speak, when you kind of fell away from the faith? So, you know, I, I didn't. Um, I was never like a party. I never went out. You know, I don't, I don't drink or anything, but you know, just not still in how you speak, you know, um, 
you know, other things, not, not living, yeah, definitely not living a good life as, as I should have. Definitely. I mean, that, you know, now looking back, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's terrifying. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, I didn't, I did not live as I should have, you know, even not, even, okay, I didn't go out and party and drink anything like that, but still not living a good life, you know? Well, that's what's funny is like, you weren't that bad. And yet you think it was like horrible. And yet people who are falling away through sin are like, oh, I'm not that bad. You know, I'm not, you know, I, I, you know, I'm a pretty good person. <laughs> Everyone thinks they're a good person, you know, no matter how they're living. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but I, 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 think I just, let me just say this real quick. It's, for me, it's like, it's like getting dressed in the dark. You know, I used to do that as a kid and I found that I used to have one black sock and one dark blue sock and I couldn't tell the difference between the two in the dark. But when I was in the light, it was clean, clear as day. You've come into the light yeah. so you can see how superfluous like things are because you are spiritually enlightened now in a sense. You've been graced by God. And it's amazing the difference between living in the flesh and living in the spirit. You literally are completely blind until God shows you these things. Then you're like, oh my gosh, I really messed up. And it's like what yeah. other people think is small is actually compared to God in perfection, big. Yes. What what I think is scary looking back on that is is people would have said, Oh, he's a good guy and thinking like to now it's like, no. I was, you know, if I you know, God forbid I was called, you know, at that hour, I was not ready. You know, and that that's what's frightening. So people say, Oh, he's a good guy and it's like, No, <laughs> you know, that's it's like, no, I'm not living the way I should have, you know? And and that's what's frightening. It's like it, it, I would have been considered a good guy. Me too. You know, you know, and that that's yeah. Being good doesn't get us to heaven, people. No, exactly. You know, if you see someone who's good, oh well, they were a good person. Doesn't matter going to hell if they don't have Christ. Because exactly. sin separates us from God. It's like quicksand and it's literally pulling you down. The only solution to that is Jesus Christ, who has an olive branch, you know, and is gonna pull right. you out of that quicksand. He's reaching the branch all the way in there, he's saying, Take it, take it, take it. And many people are so caught up in their idols and their their worldly pursuits and passions that they're not really interested in the branch. Yeah, Jesus might have been a good guy. Yeah, I should probably go to church more. Yeah, I could probably pray more. I could probably do a lot of things, but I don't. And you know what? We have a whole video on this channel you guys can look up, and it's on sloth. And sloth is a sadness arising in the heart, knowing that the good is difficult. So you know what's good, but you're sad because you just don't want to do it. And the whole a language of sloth is, I know I should. I know I should. Oh, I, I need to get to that. But you never do. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. But we never do those good things we know we should do, which is why we walk the wrong path. We really need to make that. You know, Jesus puts a line in the sand and we need to make that decision. And I, so I, I think the big turning point for me was in college, reading the diary of St. Faustina. So again, that comes from my grandpa's collection. It was in my brother's room. He took it from my grandpa's collection. But um, I remember I, I would pray like the chapel of divine mercy growing up. Not every day, but there was just some days that I would I would pray it. And I remember, you know, those little like those prayer pamphlets, you know, I was like, all right, I know this, this, this was given to St. Faustina. So I went to my, my grandpa's house. I was like, let me learn a little bit about her. So he just, you know, I love learning about the saints. I was reading like a little book from his, uh, his library. I was like, you know what? This is kind of boring. Let me just open up the diary. If you've ever seen the diary, right? It's a thick book. I was like, there's no way I'm getting through this. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> That's exactly. I was it's like, you. there's no way I'm getting This is the little through. version. Yeah, I like, exactly. I was like, there's no way I'm getting through that. So I was like, what I did, if you know, in that book, all in bold is what Jesus told her. All the, all the bold. I was like, it's maybe a quarter of the book. I was like, I could read through that. So that's what I did. I just started, I was like, let me just see what Jesus said to her. You know, and I started reading that and um, it was awesome. And then I started, I eventually read the whole thing, but like out of order. But um, the big, the big, I guess, turning point was what Jesus told her. One of the biggest quotes that really hit me. Uh, I remember I was in college. I was in my apartment one night um, and uh, I was reading, you know, Jesus said to her, the greater the sinner, the greater right he has to my mercy. Now, I, I think, you know, growing up, I was Catholic. We all know, like, right, I know God loves me. You know, I know he loves everyone, but it like finally hit me. It actually got from here to like my heart is like, you know, God really loves you. And not, and, and, you know, all the sinful things I've done, all the stupid things I've done, you know, he still loves me. 
It's like, so one, there was like this profound, you know, understanding of God really loves me. It's not just, it's not just something I've, I've heard over and over. I think I, I knew that, but it like really sunk in. And also, well, I don't know, within that, there was also a call to the priesthood that kind of flashed through my mind. You know, I didn't hear an audible voice. That would have been nice. <laughs> but uh, that, that was also um, kind of flashed through my mind. But the other thing, and I think it was what St. Faustina said, that not only like does God want to forgive us, but he wants us to become great saints. So it's like whatever I have done, that you know, there's a lot of you know, a lot of sinful things. It's like not only does God want to forgive me, but he wants to become a great saint. And that's what it finally it hit me. It's like, all right, all this like wrestling, trying to be the best, it's like ultimately that's gonna end. You know, this is what I've really been striving for, is, is God. And she gave everything to God. It's like and, and that's like I saw it through her life. And the other saints too, but like specifically her life, it's like she gave everything. Like Lord, whatever you want, that's that's what I'm here for. And it's like that's it's like that's I finally got it. It's like this is what we're here for. It's for Him, Amen. you know. No, and it's not like I just dropped everything <laughs> and and you know. But like there was from that moment, there was continual, you know, moving forward. When you felt called to the priesthood, was it kind of scary for you? Did you want it? Did you kind of ignore it, run from it for a while? No, I don't. I don't. I think there were signs actually going back when I was younger, um, but that was like the real big moment. I guess that's when I, whenever anyone asks, that's that's the first moment where it hit me. No, I wasn't opposed to it, and I was like, I, I was never like, oh, I'll never, I'll never do that. Not me, you know. I was always there was always an open to it. It's like, right, maybe. You know, it's like, That's I cool. don't think so. I just, I just always thought I would get married, you know, and funny how that and so works. at the time, I mean, I, I even had a, I guess maybe shortly after that, I had a girlfriend we were, we were dating for two years. And again, I just kind of thought I'd get married, but that call of the priesthood just kept growing. Hmm. Yeah. I was the opposite. I, my mom was like, oh, you should become a priest. I'm like, oh no, no. Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah. my, maybe it was the way she told me, she kept trying to like push me toward that. But the whole mm -hmm. thing was like me running for years. And it yeah. took me a long time to get to the point where it's like, you know what, if that's what God wants, I need to do it. And if he doesn't want it, I still need to want to do it because I need to love and at least understand the beauty of the vocation of the priesthood, even if it's not for me. And so it took a long time and lots of fears that had to be <clears throat> removed that God was going to make me yeah. do something that I didn't want to do. And he's going to you know, and I think that's a, a big lie in the spiritual life is if I follow God, he's going to make me do something I don't want to do, you know, which might be true. But generally, it's a lie from the devil I found. And even if it is true that he's going to make you want to do it, he's also going to give you the desire to want to do it. You know, if you follow him, he's going to give you those holy desires. And I prayed for those if he wanted it. So it ended up leading me to a um, a retreat. Uh, I went to a discernment retreat. I think I was engaged. I was like, but the voice, oh, wow. either, I don't know if it was like the voices of God still calling me, or if it was my fear mm -hmm. still nagging me, or the devil still, I couldn't set, for years, yeah, I yeah. just yelled sure. at God, I was like, this is just torture, God, I can't figure it out, just plainly tell me, and maybe he right. did, but the bottom line is like, I just need to get this figured out, like, if it's mm -hmm. going, all right, fine, I'll follow God, I love him above all things, if not, whatever, I won't, and so I went to this discernment retreat weekend, <laughs> and. um mm -hmm. I, engaged. Yeah, I think I was engaged or close <laughs> wow. to it. It might have been right before I got engaged. And um and I decided to do it. And it was so weird. As soon as I got there, I got sick. I walked in and I just instantly got sick. Like I was in the bed the whole weekend, just throwing up, couldn't move, couldn't walk. Like the the brothers were mad at me. They're like, Are you gonna come out and join us for the weekend? I'm like, in case you didn't notice, I can't move. <laughs> But if you want to right. give me some discernment materials, I'll happily read them in bed as I'm barfing or whatever. Right. So <laughs> the only time I got better was on Sunday morning. So I, I could come out and heard one talk. And that was by a deacon who was married and said, you know, if you want to give everything to God, you don't have to be a priest. You could be a brother. You could be a deacon. You can be a lay person. The Holy Family was the holiest people on earth. And they were lay people. I was like... And for, for me, that just like spoke to me. Sorry, this is not my story, but that, so, um, but that spoke to me a lot. And um, that mm -hmm. like kind of gave me peace. And maybe it was just so weird how that happened. And then I went to adoration and all these, I just prayed about it. And all these demons, I feel like I had for years, just demons of fear, demons of 
um, int intimidation just left and I saw them leave and it just had the peace beyond understanding for like literally three straight weeks. It was like a bubble of peace. Awesome. And I just knew that that was not for me. And it was like, so weird. Mm -hmm. The huge grace. That's great. Yeah. So that's the short version. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I know there's, there's many things leading up after. But if it helps constant. anyone, you know, if you're struggling out there, you know, I'm sure, you know, maybe you can talk, Father Greg, about, you know, how the priesthood has been for you. You know, do you love the priesthood? Are you glad God called you to the priesthood? You know, like, do you find yourself, you know, closer to God, more of a full human being, that sort of thing? Yes. No, I, I love it. I sing mass, you know, hearing confession, going to confession myself always, <laughs> you know. Um, but I think, yeah, the, those those different areas that... um you know, God's always working on you. And, and that, that's why I see even more, it's more so as a priest, because also you're, you're in, you know, you're also in, the, in public too. So, you know, as a, as a public figure as well, but God's constantly working on you and, and you have to constantly, like he's constantly pursuing us, but we also have to constantly pursue him. And I think, I don't know, even yeah, as a priest, just how much you have to, like, he has to be everything. There's no, God, you know, I tell this to everyone, and, and my, myself I'm speaking to, God doesn't want half your heart. He wants the whole thing. That's it, you know? And, and that's what ultimately, in whatever vocation you're in, whether you're a priest, married, single, God wants everything. You know, it's not just like, you know, he just wants an hour a week. No, he wants He wants all of it. And and, and we're whatever vocation we're in, we're called to give everything. We're called to sacrifice everything. But that's why I love I love the saints because they're, it's like they gave everything. And it was a struggle, you know. Um, but that's when they found their true happiness. It's like if they could find true joy in suffering, it's like that's that's it. You know, not that we're just suffering for suffering's sake, but it's like it's also to for the good of our souls to purify us and for the salvation of souls. It's like that's what it's all about. You know, and it's like whatever whatever vocation God calls you to, just to say yes. You know, that, that was... Think like Our Lady to the, the, the kids of the, ch the children of Fatima. Are you willing? Are you willing to suffer? Are you willing to offer yourself up? That for, for those like those children, they were all under nine years old. That gives me great hope. It's like that call for holiness is meant for all of us. There's no exception. I, you know, I go into the school sometimes. I'll teach. It's like none of us have an exception. Those kids, they were young. They were called to give everything. That means all of us are called to, and and that's ultimately where we're going to find our happiness. And you see that with the saints. That's what I saw with St. Faustina's life. It's like, boy, she's just constantly suffering and she's so joyful. You know, it's like, because it's like, if you have God, you have everything. If you don't have God, you don't have anything. That's it. You know, like, like that's what it ultimately comes down to. And those things, like you said, well, sometimes God will call you to things you don't want to do. I think that's definitely true, you know, but it's ultimately, that is what you want. Because if you want to do his will, it's not always going to be what, what, it is what you want, but your your natural tendency, right? The old man doesn't want to do it. You know, that's the that's the sloth of the old man or the the pride, the selfishness, whatever it might be. But he's trying to it's he's just trying to tear us from that. Because this is our happiness, is following his will. And so the more you kind of um just surrender to his will, you trust and and, and have confidence that God's gonna get you through it, the, the peace um in your life grows. I, I think as you mentioned in your own, it's like all right. Whatever you want me to do, Lord, I'll do it. You know, and and once you you say once you kind of surrender to that, you stop fighting. There's a lot more peace. It's like it's it's going to be difficult, but I know He's going to be there. That was the other thing. Our Lady said, you know, to the children, "Are you willing?" And they said, "Yes." She said, "Well, very well. You'll have much to suffer, but the grace of God will be your comfort." Like that's all of us, right? Saint Paul. You know, our Lord said, "You know, my grace is sufficient." It's like you know. I, I was just, I think that was the Mass this past Sunday, or the, the Latin, in the Latin Mass, the readings, I think it was this past Sunday, but it, was, it hit me like what St. Augustine said, that the smallest part of, of this, the, 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 the smallest bit of grace is greater than all of the beauty of creation. It's like, so that's worth everything. Just a little bit of God's grace is worth everything. Amen. It's worth, um, you know. Maybe you can, before we finish up, um, you can... Can you talk about maybe give some advice for people who are in the world who, you know, like how to live for God, even people who are pursuing 
things that take a lot of time, you know, like how do we give to, you know, let's say wrestling or sports or yeah. our job and still give our lives to God as well. So definitely prayer. If, if you're not praying, you know, you don't have a chance, you know, you got, you got to pray every day, bare minimum, right? 15 minutes. That's, that's the bare minimum. But like no saint has ever said, I'll just do the bare minimum. I'll just kind of slip into heaven. You know, it's like, but at least you have to take at least 15 minutes a day uh, for prayer. Uh, however you spend that time. But um, I think, you're gonna, I mean, I guess we are kind of fine in time. That's not going to be enough, but there, there's plenty of opportunities to, to, to pray. Like one of the, like when I was working, I was like, all right, I'm driving to work rather than put on the radio, just pray, pray the rosary. You know, make the car your your little monastery. You can, you know, there's so much time we waste in, in tra like traffic. It's going stuck in traffic. It's like, well, you have a you have a great opportunity to pray the rosary here, or or be on the train, or, you know, we have plenty of opportunities like that. Um, so definitely prayer. Um, obviously, the sacraments, like mass every Sunday, is not optional. Um, regular confession is critical. That's one of the things that really helps me, um, and that's not just me, but but anyone. At least, I'd say at least once a month, you know, and I'd say you could certainly go more. St. Padre Pio said, you know, even a, even a, um, a clean house gets dusty after a week, you know, um, so regular confession. Um, I think if you can to get like a spiritual director, that's helpful. Not everyone, I guess, has that kind of time. Um, the other thing, just offering up your duties to God, you know, uh, like a morning offering is very important that you're offering everything to God, whatever I do, my work, you know, taking care of the kids, like just my daily duties, offering that up to God and, and just kind of renewing that throughout the day. Even if it's a short prayer, you know, Jesus, I love you. you know, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I give this to you. You know, help me and, and whatever, but just little prayers throughout the day to kind of renew that, that offering. So that's, that's off the top of my head. I'm trying to think. No, no problem. I would just add to that for myself because I'm super busy as well. Sometimes too busy for my own good. You know, starting this whole organization from scratch is no small feat and it's really difficult and takes, you know, blood, sweat and tears just to get it going and get it growing. Um, but, you know, a lot of times, you know, I could listen to my Alexa in the morning or, you know, watch a TV show or, you know, listen to the sports latest news. Or lately, I've just been saying, Alexa, play the Divine Mercy Chaplet. And I'll say that yeah. in the morning while I'm making breakfast or, you know, um, exactly. washing dishes, you know, or something like that. Or I'll say... You know, I'll I'll put on my uh, liturgy of the hours, but I have it playing, so yes. I don't have to read it. So I can do two things at once. Now, of course, all of our prayers should not be while doing other things. You know, we should have right. dedicated time to God too. But I've been trying to take a lot more time just to be silent, not to listen to anything, not to watch anything, just to to pray, to add these little prayers in different times of the day. I mean, I definitely try yep. to pray the rosary. Definitely try to pray the chaplet. You know, try to, you know, go to mass or, you know, at least watch the mass on TV or something like that. So, you know, I think we can put more time in. We just have to cut more time out for other things. That's that's a big one, because, you know, I was just in I helped teach seventh grade. I'm like, how many of you wake up and say, I have to watch 15 minutes of uh, of TV today? It's like no one. Nobody says, oh, I have to get my 15 minutes in of video games or or wrestling today. It's like, no, that that hour, that hour and a half is set. You know, probably even more, right? Like that's in my schedule. It's like, all right, now when it comes to my relationship with God, it's like, what's mo most important? Everyone's going to say God, right? I hope, right? And it's like, if you say that, well, then you, you have to make time. Like that has to, and you, and you find, I'm sure as, as you found, as any of us, when you give that time to God, one, the day kind of opens up, that you actually find yourself being more productive uh, and that you want to spend that time. It's like, there's just so much, like now I watch TV sometimes like, uh, you know, uh, you know, but my parents and the TV's on, it's like, it's just so noisy. It's just constant. Like it just, you know, unless like there's so, there's so many good things on, on like YouTube, you know, good Catholic channels, you know, like yours. It's like, there's so much good. There's so much good that we could use these things for. And it's like, we're not. It's like, so it's like, if I am going to watch TV or if I am going to, you know, go online it's like, right, I'm going to go on YouTube. I'm going to go to a solid channel. And, you know, the Catholic channel, learn something about the faith, not just the idol, you know? So it's, it's using, using the time. Well, you know, I, I think I it was like Mother sports. Teresa. 
I love to watch sports. I love to watch Marvel movies. I like to play video games. It's just, I think that some need to come down and the other needs to go up. You know, yeah. it's like St. John the Baptist, you know, more of him, less of me. And that's the exactly. key thought to a victory. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, Father, and that's the only way the victory is going to be won. <laughs> amen. Literally. You know, that's Literally. it. That's it. He has to increase. I have to decrease and until that happens. You know. Yeah. And for those, I just, you know, those who are struggling with sin and overcoming your sin and always getting down on your sin. We have several videos on that about getting out of the way, you know, like, oh, I failed again. Oh, I messed up. God, I promised you I wouldn't do this. And I did it. I, 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 it's all about you trying to become better rather than you getting out of the way and letting God do all the heavy lifting, surrendering yourself to him, uniting yourself to him, joyfully giving him your failures. I mean, St. Therese of Lisieux used to love recounting her failures because it reminded her of how little she is and how needed, how more she needed to rely on Christ. And so, you know, we need to do that too. And um, there's, we have tons Absolutely. of spiritual videos here if you guys are interested in growing closer to God in that way. And that's where I think sports really helps help me. It's like I'm spending all this time, you know, you have a match. It's like, right, here's where you lost or here's where you're weak. And it's like, you'll attack that. You know, it's like, I'm going to work on this all week. Yeah, we don't do that with our relationship with God. Or maybe even a business. It's like, all right, here's where our sales are low. So now we're going to work on, we're going to work on sales in this area. It's like, we'll constantly do that. But then it comes to God. It's like, we take such a mediocre, it's like, we're, we're talking about eternity. We're talking about eternity here, you know? Father, that's like fantastic points. Literally, I feel like I might take off on that on another video. Like that is such a good point. That's like, it's amazing. I feel like we could do a whole show just on that, about how we yeah. fail, but we attack those failures in every part of our life, except the spiritual life. So many people are just like, oh, you know, we don't really think about it many times. Well, think, think of parents with your kids. It's like, if your kid is failing, you're going to do everything. It's like, look, I don't care whether you like it or not. You're going to this tutor. You're going to do that. You're going to at, you're, you're going to stay after school. And it's like we're failing in this. You know, many right are failing in the spiritual. It's like we're not going to mass. You're not going to confession. It's like you're actually failing. And it's like, well, we'll, we'll try to go next week. That'll be it's like, no, no. Again, we're talking about eternity. It's like, you know, this we're talking about the one test that matters. You know, and 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 we, we just don't have we don't see that urgency. Ooh, amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you for joining us today, Father. I really appreciate your yes, wisdom. You I appreciate me, you sharing your story. At any time, I'm happy to happy to share. Yeah, it's so great to see that you were so hardcore, and now you're hardcore for God. And I love seeing that. And uh, I pray that you help many other people to follow that path as Please, well. Yes, pray pray for me and pray for priests. I think one of the things I have have learned as a priest, people don't understand how how much prayer we need. You know, the, I would even the, say me you know, too, you know, being in ministry yeah. all the time, you know, and just being attacked on every side. We need more prayers. Oh, yeah. Not less. Ex yes, definitely. Anytime. I mean, you're living the faith more that there, there's going to be a target, you know, from the evil one. But, you know, obviously we know God's power is, is far greater. And if we stay with Our Lady, we're going to be just fine. Amen. Well, thank you, Father, and God bless you and your work. Thank you, Brian. 